So now that Skunk Works is done, um, I've been asked a lot already, both on social media and emails and stuff like, Jay, why did you switch from the 7950X3D back to an Intel-based system? So I figured I'd make a talking head video right now, kind of talking about how the last eight to 10 months have been, what is it? February was when I was done with it. Yeah, February to November now. Using the X3D, what it's been like, and ultimately what led to my changes. So you guys have kind of one place to go for these answers instead of having to dig through all of the build log to figure out the little snippets of information I've given out over time. You know, actually do this the right way. EK Waterblocks Quantum Torque Fittings for PC Liquid Cooling include static extenders, rotary adapters, offsets, double rotary fittings, and micro series for all small form factor systems. With a wide variety of fittings, your loop building experience becomes much easier, quicker, and more streamlined. And all torque fittings come in four major finish options that will blend in with any setup. The standard nickel plated versions, the special matte black, satin titanium, and fittings plated with real gold. With replaceable locking rings available in multiple colors and aesthetic color rings only available from EK, the customization options are almost endless. To see the full lineup of EK water block torque fittings, follow the link in the description below. So it's kind of funny, this isn't the first time I've had to make this video like this. Um, way back when I started my channel, back in 2012, I had an 8120 FX system that updated to an 8350 system and then eventually ended up moving over to uh, Z67 3770K Ivy Bridge. Um, so I had to make a video back then about why I had switched. In fact, maybe go and watch that video. I'll try and link it down below where, um, I don't know, maybe the reasons are somewhat similar. Anyway, moving on, um, the 7950X3D CPU obviously built upon the 3D vCache design that we had seen with the 5800X3D, um, and it was anticipated to be the best gaming CPU ever to exist in, in gaming CPUs. First and foremost here, I am fighting through a cold. It's not COVID, I took two tests, okay? But anyway, I'm fighting through a cold and some brain fog. And I'm having to deal with all the nomenclature and numbers and stuff of these CPUs. I'm gonna do my best. There'll probably be some misspeaks. Hopefully Phil will do corrections on screen if I say anything wrong. Moving forward, the 7950X3D. It is a CC, dual CCD system. So what that means is it's got its IO controller. It's got CCD0 and CCD1. One of the CCDs is basically taken right out of a 7950X non-3D and plopped right on the, uh, the substrate, right? Right there, right on the, on the fabric. The other one is a 3D vCache, which has the, you know, the whole point of being an X3D, which is the 3D vCache. You've got stacked cache, more of it, and it's faster, and games love it. The problem is the 3D vCache is extremely sensitive to temperature. So what that meant is to keep everything under control, lower clock speeds and lower voltages and lower power draw, which sounds like a great thing, but an overall cost of lower frequency. So the sacrifice that AMD made there was more cache, a little bit slower speed, but because more things are running through cache rather than going to system memory, better frame rates. The problem is you needed something to tell the CPU like, hey, this is a game and this is a, is a work intensive task. So when you're gaming, it would park the CCD that did not have the 3DV cache on it and try and run the game entirely on half the CPU power on the V3D cache or 3DV cache CCD to give you better frame rates. The thing is it used Xbox Game Bar to do that and it wasn't always right. So I noticed when over the last 10 months of having the system, I would always monitor what was happening with the, the CCDs. And I even had a, a sensor panel so I could see what the usage was and stuff. And every now and then I would notice certain games, especially like indie games, and I play a lot of indie games, um, would actually park the wrong CCD. It would park the 3D cache and it would run the standard uh, CCD. That's not really a problem. It's just what sucks is they took basically one of the chiplets right off of a 7950X non-3D and plopped it on the, the, the fabric. And then the other one is the 3DV cache. Now, if you're running AAA titles like Cyberpunk or Battlefield or main titles that were very well developed and, and spoke to the game bar nicely, it had no problem divvying up the, uh, the workload. And now, if you were to run a title, something that had CPU usage in the background that was not gaming, like I say, you were live streaming or you maybe got some video encoding going in the background or something, and you're multitasking, it had a problem determining sometimes which cores to park and which not. So sometimes it would completely turn off the 3DV cache die or CCD and put everything onto the non uh, 3DV cache CCD. So I felt like there's still a lot of work to be done on AMD when it comes to recognizing the tasks at hand and parking the correct cores and, and with the affinity in Windows, moving things around where they needed to be. 
Now, at the end of the day, when it comes to gaming and stuff, it wasn't really all that noticeable. What was noticeable, though, was the fact that the frequencies would drop significantly. So already, because of the uh, sensitivity of temperature, when it comes to the 3D V-Cache die, you'll notice there's a lower clock frequency, lower power draw, lower voltage, the whole deal, just because of the sensitivity of that cache's stack. So you got a lot of heat kind of going in a Z-axis through the die prior to getting to the, C the CPU cooler. So temperatures were sensitive and even had a lower, I think 85 degrees Celsius is where the TJ Maxx was on that versus 95 degrees Celsius on the non-X3D CPU. So I found myself as time going on going, man, I almost wish I had just gone with the 7950X non-3D for an overall more rounded user experience when it comes to the CPU, which in my opinion, the 7950X is, a, is still a, a, an amazing CPU, um, especially if you're doing multitasking and such. And I would take that few percent hit in gaming performance rather than getting the few percent increase in gaming performance and then at the, at the sacrifice of the overall rounded CPU experience. On my system at home, I had to ask myself, what am I doing with this? Well, I'm doing a lot of gaming on it, but I'm also doing a lot of um, like thumbnail creation and Photoshop and just general like messing around on my system. So I found that I wasn't getting the full benefit of the X3D. I wasn't playing a lot of AAA titles. I, I just, that aside, it wasn't that big of a deal to stay with the X3D. The biggest problem I had was memory stability. Now you guys will probably remember in the beginning of this, of owning the X3D CPU and using it in my system over here, uh, the one that is half torn apart right now. I was using um, HyperX 6000 megahertz AMD Expo RAM. So AMD Expo is basically what they called their AM5 slash DDR5 DOCP, um, kind of like memory timings that are sort of tailored to AMD. Um, it would recognize it's an AMD CPU, so it was supposed to just kind of tune the memory to overall compatibility and stability with AMD. The problem was, it didn't really seem to do that. So I was never able to boot my system with 6,000 megahertz RAM stable. And it didn't matter what revision BIOS I was on. Uh, and, and you guys know with AM5 and, A and AMD motherboards, BIOS revisions were were literally just popping out like crazy. I mean, they, there was new BIOS updates like every month. Every single one said more RAM stability and every single one was like better CPU stability and better voltage time, uh, regulation. And it, it just didn't seem to be the case. It almost seemed like every time I updated my BIOS, I lost stability. Now you can't really overclock an X3D CPU because of the reasons I already said temperature and voltage limitations. Um, you could go in and you could do like a curve optimizer in like Ryzen Master, which gained me a little bit of performance. Now that little bit of performance really wasn't that noticeable. I mean, we were, we were talking like a minus 30 offset, uh, which was not that much. What it allowed me to really do with PBO and all that was to try and keep those boost clocks as high as possible. And because of the fact that I had, you know, two 360 radiators in there with the CPU block, um, even though I had a 4090 in there, it, it, temperatures were good. I never hit 85 C. I would see like 81 C, but as you know, 85 C is a TJ Maxx. When it came to like the memory timings and the memory stability, I found myself running 5,800 megahertz and it was fine for a week or two. And then I would come turn on the system and then it would retrain memory 18 times. And it would take five minutes to get the system to turn on. And I'm like, what the hell? Even though I had it set so that it would just lock the memory timings, not retrain every time starting the system, I'd get complete lockups on startup or I'd get blue screens on startup. And then it, the only way I could get the system stable again is to go in and drop the memory even more, 5,600 megahertz. And that would run fine for a while and then drop it down to 5,400 megahertz. And then that would run fine for a while. And then it got to the point to where I was crashing during my live stream. In the earlier days of my live stream when having the X3D at home, you'd see a lot of weird, I, I'd see people complaining about frame drops or I would just completely drop out entirely. And then my system would be running just fine on my end, but then OBS would be completely locked up and nothing's happening. And I'm like, what is a, a system restart would lead to a blue screen. And then I drop my RAM down to 5,000 megahertz. Then it got to the point where the only way my system would run stable, regardless of what BIOS that I was on, even if I was running stock CPU, everything, the curve optimizers off, everything is just out of the box settings with the X3D CPU. I would have to run base timings, base frequency on the memory. So now I had 6,000 megahertz sticks that were running 4,800 megahertz DDR5 base. So it was just getting extremely annoying. 
more recently, the last couple of weeks, I found that if I didn't run my system for a while, and my system was always powered on, what I mean is power switch, the power supply was on, it had power, it'd be sitting in that standby off mode. I would turn on the system and then the, the I would sit there and see, not memory timing, because code 15 on an AMD motherboard was basically, hey, we are training memory right now. I wouldn't see code 15, I would just see it hang on other BIOS codes and then power off, power on, cycle a few times, and then I'd get to Windows. So it's one of those things I'm like, I am now factory 100% out of the box. There's nothing adjusted at all in the BIOS except for maybe the fan curve. Nothing touched at all with memory, nothing touched at all. Because you could, because you couldn't do overclocking on the CPU, really, I never bothered with um, the BIOS overclocking at all. Not even the AI features or any of that, because none of that really worked with the X3D. Once I noticed I wasn't even enabling Expo, I was just running factory RAM settings with the latest BIOS, and I was dealing with these constant crashes or lockups or needing to power cycle the, the power supply off and then back on. I figured 10 months of these kinds of problems with AMD, although I gave it a real shot, I don't feel like these would have existed on the 7950X. And that's where my, my regret went. I should have just gone with the 7950X. Because of the uh, revival of Skunkworks, and Skunkworks always existing on an Intel system, I took the opportunity to say, okay, now it's time for me to see how things are going on the Intel side. And even though I've been running an Intel 13900K here at work, um, until I'm out of the office and at home where I don't have a box, a warehouse full of parts, just be like, oh, I'm gonna swap this RAM or whatever to see how things are running. Getting my system at home and using it in a real world use case, which in my instance is Twitch streaming games and going on there and, and, and doing, you know, my, my tax documents and just regular workflow type stuff a, a regular user at home would have. That gives me the true indication of what a system is like. With the 14900K, I'm already feeling a little bit of regret only because of the fact that the 14900K that I have is not some sort of a golden sample. It's running hotter than I think it should. I don't know if maybe this water block is not making the tightest of contact on the CPU because of all the things it's contacting, like the SSD and it's contacting the VRMs and it's contacting the chokes and the CPU. I just don't know at this point if I'm getting the tightest fit possible because even going in there and doing the best voltage tuning that I can, uh, it's still running like 86 to 90C depending on the load. The CPU is overclocked. I am running 5.7 gigahertz on all core and I have upped the E cores up to 4.6. So I have pushed those quite a bit. Even with a minus 75 or 75 millivolt offset reduction on the voltage, only running about 1.26 volts, it's still hitting all the way up to, to about 90 C. On the flip side, I have a 13900K in my work system that is a golden sample. I can run that CPU at 1.2 volts, overclock the 13900K up to 5.8 gigahertz all core, and I'm getting the same score as I am on the 14900K, if not a little bit higher. I've got 42,000 in Cinebench R23, and it does it at 75C. So I'm like, damn, I should have just taken that CPU and put it in this system and said, screw 14th gen, um, but I had the CPU and I threw it in there, and now I wish I had gone with maybe the 13900K, because there was no reason to throw a 14th gen in there at all. But remember, Skunkworks is all about overkill and stupid. If you go back and watch the old Skunkworks vlogs, I remember those days of like, I'm putting three Titan X Maxwells in here. There is no reason to do three Titan X Maxwells, except for like Time Spy at the time, there was no Port Royal or anything, but Time Spy, Fire Strike. It was fun and it was overkill. And it was fun to do that kind of system here again. Um, so I'm stuck in this position now where it's like, I'm struggling with practicality. Like I'm trying to be more practical with stuff these days, especially to be a little bit more in tune with like, regular buyers and stuff. But for Skunkworks, it was always about being crazy and over the top. Like I should have put another 4090 in there just as an encoder GPU for no reason other than that to stay with the, within the spirit of Skunkworks, but obviously that would have been like a $2,000 waste. There's no reason to do that whatsoever. But anyway, those are the main reasons. It, it honestly came down to the memory. The memory timing and the memory stability itself was just enough is enough. But the amount of people that I've also had send me emails just sort of validating my own experience through theirs, saying, Jay, everything you've said about AMD, I'm experiencing it too. I'm getting memory re re crashes. I'm getting constant blue screens. I've got stock settings. I don't know what the hell is happening. Uh, it's unfortunate to see that many people with that same kind of experience because I really was sort of ho hoping mine was more of a one-off. But there's too many people telling me the same story. So I feel like AMD is on the right track with the X3D stuff, and obviously the 76 or the 5600 X3D being probably a great CPU for AM4, 
single, I feel like the X3D stuff on a single CCD is the best way to go for that. Cause I feel like this remind, honestly, this reminds me of the early Threadripper days when Threadripper had to completely disable one of the CCXs and they were called CCXs on Threadripper and CCDs on mainstream, but there were four CCXs and it would disable one of them or two of them. The early Threadrippers were two, but anyway, it would disable one of them entirely whenever it would go into gaming mode, but then it still had to run memory through that CCX back to the other CCX, which actually led um, to some latency issues. My point is it feels a lot like the early Threadripper days with stability and just overall crashes and things like Phil when he edited on Threadripper for us for many years and it wasn't until we got to like a 3000 series Threadripper that he felt confident like this is a solid system. So it's kind of unfortunate, but um, I mean, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, there's one main reason why. It's my system and I can do with it what I want and I can experiment with what I want, just as you guys should. Just like if you've got someone nagging your ear, like, why'd you go Intel, you're such a shill, you should have gone AMD, be like, you know what? Good for you, go AMD. You have choice, that's awesome. Back in the day, you only had one real choice, Intel if you wanted performance or AMD if you didn't have a lot of money and that's not the case anymore. So at the end of the day, I wanted to. I wanted to try it, I wanna experience it now and see what Intel is like at home. I have not used Intel at home uh, in a while, since 10th gen. I mean, we're at 13.5 gen. So I wanna see what it's like. And you know what? That's the best part about it being my system. This is my system. So what is your system? What's your choice? Are you using an X3D CPU? Has it been good? Has it been bad? I would say my, my experience has overall been neutral. I've had some bad AMD experiences. And these experiences here are not bad, they're annoying. And if you're one of those people that emailed me about your system just being a complete nightmare when it comes to AMD, yeah, I, I would just honestly stay on top of the BIOS, maybe do a lot of forum reading, try to find what sort of base configurations are the most stable. Unfortunately, I feel like when it comes to AMD right now with the X3D stuff, this is exclusive to X3D. The non-X has been very solid as far as I'm concerned when we use it in, our, in various situations. The X3D stuff still has a lot of kinks to be worked out. This is only second generation X3D and the first generation of doing it with multiple CCDs. So it's gonna take time. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.